for his show. He cried uh, on the air. I mean, it was just a very sad day for him. When we come back, the end of an era in Twin Cities television. local kids show hosts were taking advantage of their young viewers in the early 1970s an organization called action for children's television brought reform no more commercials delivered by children's TV characters and you tell your mom and dad about this too the movie is to class even though action for children's television had the best intentions the net result of their efforts was they destroyed children's television in, on the local level all across the country. The boss called me in and said, hey, we're, we're uh, taking off uh, the morning show. We're also taking off the noon show. He said, that's it. The announcement was devastating for Casey and Roundhouse. He cried uh, on the air. I mean, it was just a very sad day for him. And it came about you know, in such a fast way. The last Lunch with Casey aired in December of 1972 best as we can tell no one even videotaped the final show perhaps because Casey and Roundhouse weren't convinced it was over Roger Austin was so certain some other station in town would pick up his show he turned down Channel 11's offer to stay on as a booth announcer they just wanted to go on they felt they had uh, a mission to you know educate and help all the kids in the area grow up but times were changing in other ways too the expansion of school lunch programs meant fewer kids going home at noon. When they were home, their attention was shifting to a new generation of kids' programs on public television. To the dismay of Casey and Roundhouse, no other offers came. I was really lost there for a while. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Roger opened a pizza restaurant for a while, then a small chain of bike shops. In 1983, he attempted a comeback on Channel 29 with a new sidekick he called Charlie Caboose played by Jim Barber. But the new show never caught on like the old one. It's time for the Roundhouse Show. Roundhouse, meantime, invested his own money to produce a children's show for public channel KTCA. But his efforts were cut short when Lynn Dwyer suffered a coronary aneurysm in 1976 while jogging in Brainerd prior to a public appearance, a weakness that may have been linked to his bout with rheumatic fever as a child. Dwyer was 48 years old when he died. His son, Lauren, was still in high school. This was the last hat that was his regular hat. We knew we had a, a treasure there, a local treasure, and we had to share him with it. <laughs> Casey would find his way again by going back to radio, the career in which he started. KLKS, Breezy Point, Minnesota, serving... He signed on at the radio station in Breezy Point in 1984 making his year-round home in the lake cabin he built years earlier down a road named in his honor. There he lived alone, both his marriages having ended in divorce. Oh, come on, you rounders, if you want to hear a story about a brave engineer, Casey Jones was the rounder's name. On but whenever someone asked, be it for a ball game or a birthday party, Roger Awesome was only too happy to go back to being Casey. We'll make this very special day the best you've ever had. Happy birthday! <laughs> and he had that Casey suit hanging in the back window of his car wherever he went, and the ukulele in the little ukulele case in his back seat 
And so he could be Casey in five minutes. And he, he loved it. Oh, happy, happy birthday to every girl and boy. Roger made one of his last appearances as Casey at the CARE 11 booth at the Minnesota State Fair in the fall of 2001. He signed autographs for hours. His family stunned by the outpouring of fans. They would just light up like a little kid. They're talking about a 55-year-old guy. Casey! And just light up. Can I get your autograph? And there were just as many people after his autograph at the State Fair or in 1995 or as there were in 1965. I mean, unbelievable. Unbelievable is all I can say. Eleven months later, on July 15, 2002, Roger Awesome died of a heart attack while undergoing treatment for cancer. He'd celebrated his 74th birthday just five days earlier. His viewers, now parents and grandparents themselves, mourned Casey's passing, sending hundreds of letters and cards to his children. One woman sent me a card, you know, to the family of our beloved Casey, uh, from one of his TV children who loved the antics and having him read my name on my birthday, but even more from a once little girl whose real father was emotionally absent. I hope you don't mind that your dad was my dad, too. <sighs> that really gets me, those kind of things. It was just one of those times in the history of television that will probably never, ever be repeated. And some of the fans now are yeah, up in age, the baby boomers and stuff. They still think of Casey and Roundhouse. And you had to be something special to carry on those kinds of memories that's still in their mind. Still in the minds of viewers, 50 years after lunch with Casey signed on and more than 30 years since the program left the air. But no one should be surprised, for the Twin Cities has never known two more memorable characters than Casey Jones and Roundhouse Rodney. And kids have never had two better friends. I'm Paul Majors. Thanks for joining us. I've got a train, a great big train. You should see it go. It starts up north in Canada, travels south to Mexico. From way out east in New York town, out west to L.A. So hop aboard the happy train, we'll have a happy day. Hey, here comes the train. Time to say so long, gang. Have a happy day. Goodbye, everybody.